Hi everyone, I'm Boris and this is the painting uh, that I'm going to demonstrate for you. So sit back and relax and enjoy. So the colour that we are using for this painting um, are only uh, three colours. So we have French Ultramarine, deep if you uh, can get it. Well, you, you can get it, but preferably deep. Uh, alizarin Crimson. And this is a, um, what is it say? It is a lake, yellow lake. So yellow lake. These colors are transparent colors and it's very important to use transparent colors. Uh, these are the colors that uh, would have been used uh, in the past uh, as um, richer colors or, or cadmium didn't exist then in the 1800s um, oh, well they just appeared about then um, but so earlier that's the most colors who have been used as their primary colors and we are going to mix everything with these three colors I'm going to make a transparent black with those three colors because I'm going to need this black to um, dull or darken some of my greens or browns etc. So uh, let's do this black. I'm going to show you how to do a nice neutral black. Um, I had a knife here. So, there it is underneath, there we go, so, take some ultramarine, yeah, and some alizarin crimson, so less crimson, and start to mix these two colors together. As you can see here, it's too blue. So we are going to add a little bit more crimson. It starts to get shift slightly to the purple side, but only slightly. So let's add little bit of the yellow. There we are. A little bit of the yellow. Touch. There we go. That has been neutralized. Okay, now touch too much to brown side, so we add a little bit more ultramarine, and really all you do is go back and forth until you have a nice neutral black. And that is going to be a nice black to work with. So take all of it and put it on the side there. There we go. Now I've got my black, transparent black. There we are. So to wipe this, I just take a little white spirit, clean this off. Okay, so from there, 
I'm going to mix a uh, light brown to trace uh, on my canvas. So for this, again, we use all three colors, a little bit of ultramarine. little of crimson I'm trying to go to the purple side here we go purple side purple side is going to give us that brown that we after there we go look at that nice chocolatey brown coming out to there Nice. Okay. So we are going to draw with this color. Slighten it up a little bit. A little bit more yellow. go. See, there's a tendency to go to the green up, but soon enough we have our brown back. Here we go. So, uh, the medium I use just um, for it to dry a bit uh, quicker um, is Uh, the liquid original so I put in a bottle I don't have the original bottle but I just put in a bottle like this give a little shake put some on the side there to use as in when I need it there we go so that's going to thin the paint a little bit and uh, um, just uh, gonna help me to to work to work with so now let's get a, so the smallest bright have uh, and let's go back to the canvas so now the drawing has been uh, done um, we are going to talk about uh, the few brushes I'm going to use and then we are going to block in um, those uh, shapes and uh, we are going to call it a day after that because we uh, have to wait that the underpainting is dry here we go so my brushes are one of my favorite Egbert brush uh, so this comes from Rosemary and Co. Uh, let's see if we can focus on that. It's Rosemary and Co. And it is a series 2085. This is a number two. Uh, and so I will use number two and I also will use a filbert and I um, probably will go for number six or oh, that one uh, number ten again uh, from the company Rosemary and Co there we go for those who followed me, you know I did a, a small tutorial about those brushes. Uh, so the filbert, and I think for this time that will be it. Just uh, uh, these two brushes. So here we go. 
let's start with the with this one. So um, as I said, I've got my medium here. So I'm going to spread a little bit over there. There we go. And uh, I will want uh, to mix a, a dark green as we are going to start with the trees and the reflection and that's basically it for now so let's take a little bit of our yellow so important to put this first layer thinly yeah almost like a glaze we'll actually take a little bit more of medium want that very transparent as you can see you probably can see um, the board underneath so here we go touch of blue and there we are with our lovely green we don't want it that strong so I'm going to put a little bit of our black to dull it there we are okay so let's start with this color I'm going to go darker anyway there we are so let's go back to our paint yeah So, and what I'm doing is I'm going to roll the brush there all over the place where my tree is. So, I'm doing this So we have a little bit of the canvas showing through. There we are. I'm going to darken it slightly by adding a little bit of the black and maybe a touch of alizarin crimson here we are as we go down We want to lay that down thinly. touch darker by adding a little more black so the light will be coming from 
the left here. So therefore I will have darker towards the bottom there. Dark a bit warmer. There we go. Okay, uh, this tree is a little bit further so I will add a touch, let's go back over there, a touch of blue to my mix to cool it down a little bit, there we are, cool it down. And we are going to put this on that tree who's far behind. See how thinly it goes on, and that is very important. Grinding the um, grinding the um, pigments for the old masters was a lot of work, so they stretched the paint as much as they could. There we are. So we have a tree uh, in the distance over there, um, and for that I'm going to cool it down even further, maybe even get it a bit more purple. So let's go back there. So I'll do a little bit off. Oh, let's work on the other side here. Let's get a little bit of that green here. A little bit of that blue. So let's yes, cool it down nicely, a touch of the alizarin crimson. No, that's a bit too much, so go back a little bit to the blue. Here we go. That's nice. Just add a little bit more medium to this. I put it on very thinly. Actually, that is still a bit too green, so I will add a touch more of that blue here. And a smidge of the alizarin. Okay, that should do. Let's go back to that painting and. Now this is too dark, so I will add a little bit of that purple, which will lighten it a bit, and we are going to tweak it afterwards, just to have something, that's it, here we go. This is a cool red. There we go. And this tree is going right, or group of trees going right behind that house. There. There 
we are. Now there's a little bush in the front whose are a little bit um, yellower so all I will do is reach back over there and get a little bit of the yellow in my green. There we go, let's have a try on that. There we are, let's darken this a touch. There we go. There we have. And uh, we've got one on our right side. For that, I mix a little bit of all my colours over there. That can be dark. We don't want to attract the viewer to this part anyway. A little darker, especially there at the bottom. Because if you remember, our light's coming from the left. There we are. So there will be little grass all the way here supposed to be the riverbank. Let's go and just darken it slightly here as we come nearer to the bank. There we are. Maybe go a bit further down here. go. Uh, we are going to touch the roofs but before just do that shadow so a little darker just here right in the foreground there. So I just took the same mix I had for the bottom of the trees. There we go. So now to put the darks in, the darks off the trees. So again let's go over there and have a little look 
on this side so a little bit more medium over there and I'm just going to use everything there and darken it a touch with my transparent black there let's see um, needs to be slightly greener so I'm going to take a little blue touch more of the yellow there we are I've got a nice dark green coming up so is my tree so the houses are are a bit further back so only this roof here will reflect in the water and so is this one um, however only this tree and this small tree in the foreground will reflect in the water yes this one is too small and too far back so if I take go down right here and there you notice I go down down But what is important is that we have that vertical stroke. Okay, now the bit over there. Now that is slightly yellow, yellow R because the tree is a lighter tree. So I add a little yellow, a little brown. important that it's dark, uh, darker as a reflection in the water is always darker than what the subject shows on the top there we are and then we are going just to do the roofs very quickly with the reflections and uh, that will be it for today So we'll add a little more medium onto my palette. And I'm going to do a purple brown for the roots. So I had some brown left from the drawing. I will use just a touch blue 
and my red, alizarin crimson, which gives me a nice dark purple, which I will use for the roof of yeah, for the roof of the cottage. So Very light. and the soupçon over there there we go and then the same a bit more of the mix so mix, mix a little bit more went a little bit um, cooler up there for this part of the roof. Okay, now I'm just going to wipe a little bit of here. And go for the shadows. So right here, darker again.
and the same with the other side. And there we have it, part one. Part one of our demonstration. So first layer, this needs now to dry and we are going to come back with a more opaque color uh, to do our skies, the walls, and the reflections in the water that will be for uh, next time. Uh, what I could do maybe right now, before actually, add a little blue into my mix, a touch of the black, just to darken the openings which will be here. and a door here. Okay. Get a little touch darker there. Okay. And don't forget to check out part 2 of this video, uh, to like and to subscribe. I'll see you soon.